of these front incisors aren't looking great. It's actually one that's a little bit loose there. On this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. But you can see those teeth yeah. there. Yeah. They're rough. Oh, she's got that broken tooth. And there it is. Oh my gosh. Hmm. It's definitely a hole there. Massive hole. In the number five spot we have. So Toby's this little old man, sweet guy. But the problem is he's been having this chronic cough that we've been trying to resolve for the past few months. And he got better for a little while, but then the cough came back. I know, man, I know. We're gonna get this cough taken care of. So let's see here. But you can see those teeth there. Yeah. They're rough. Yeah, and this gum, so you can see it's a little painful. You see how he jerks his he head? He doesn't like it, yeah. Yeah, it's a little painful. With the condition that his teeth is in, it seems that he has some mouth pain. I know you say he's been pawing at his mouth. Yeah. So I'm thinking that cough has a lot to do with his dental disease. A lot of those teeth are probably gonna have to come out. Yeah. Toby is family. So he's not just our dog, he's our family member. So when he's hurting, we're hurting and we just wanna do whatever we can do to make him feel better and to make him have good quality of life. All right, so I'm gonna show you his radiographs. Toby desperately needs surgery on his diseased teeth, but a long-standing heart condition has so far prevented that. You can see how big his heart is. He has a moderate left atrial enlargement, but he also has severe enlargement of the left ventricle, all right? His heart is not in a good place, yeah. all right? And we know that putting him under anesthesia with his heart condition, how risky that is. Toby's surgery is definitely a risky procedure given his age and given his condition. It's definitely a lot to think about, and I am worried. Are you sleepy? Oh. Andrea loves her Toby and will do anything for him. So now we have to come to this decision, whether we put Toby under anesthesia to do the teeth because there is a very good chance that Toby could die under anesthesia. With him having dental disease, it can lead to secondary heart disease, like he has liver disease, kidney disease. Without the procedure, he's gonna to continue to be in pain. He's gonna to continue to have that bacteria going through his bloodstream, which is gonna further cause heart issues. He's just gonna feel bad for the rest of his life. And with his heart condition, that's what makes it a little more scary. Yeah. If I know he doesn't have a lot of time left with us, but for the short time that he does have, I want to make sure that he's comfortable. I think it's the best thing we can do as far as like quality of life. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. You ready? You ready to go through this, man? <laughs> Not really, but it's okay. Even though there's a lot of risks to this procedure. Toby has been such a great pet and friend to me. I think this is the least I can do to help him live a comfortable life. He's gonna be okay. <laughs> it's hoped removing Toby's diseased teeth will prevent several other serious medical conditions, as well as curing the aging poodle's hacking cough. All right, Toby, say night, night. And we'll see you in a minute, all right? Get you a good sleep. Time is of the essence. We don't want him under anesthesia for a long period of time with his heart condition because his life depends on it. First, Nurse Jenna removes years of built-up tartar from Toby's teeth. All right. <clears throat> then Arvid gets to work extracting those teeth that are too far gone to be saved. And you can see there's pus and debris that's coming out of the sockets there. And you can imagine swallowing this bacteria, inhaling this bacteria. You can see how so as I'm doing Toby's teeth, I'm thinking to myself, wow, this is probably one of the worst cases of dental disease that I've seen. Both canine teeth have created oral nasal fistulas in the mouth causing a hole through the oral cavity into the nasal sinus that can be very problematic. So food, 
particles, all kind of things are getting up in this hole. And that's also causing infection, not just in his mouth, but throughout his whole body. It decreases their lifespan, causes a lot of pain, affects other organs. So I'm gonna have to fix that, which is not good because that means he's gonna have to be under anesthesia longer than I anticipate. And of course, the longer he's under anesthesia, the higher the risk of him not making it through, so. But as Arvid begins repairing the hole in Toby's gum, little dog's condition suddenly deteriorates. So this is why I gotta get Toby off the table because the heart rate is dropping. Jen, can you bring the needle holders with you as well? His heart rate had dropped down to like 80 and it started at about 150 so we're going to give some medication and get the heart rate back up we're going back up now so i gotta get toby off the table i'm gonna have to start moving it's now becoming very scary because I know that there's a good chance that Toby may not make it off this table. And there's still a lot left to do in his mouth. I think we're running out of time. There's an oral nasal fistula here. So it's caused severe bone damage all the way into the nasal sinuses. Well, he's been dealing with that for a while. And I uh, think that's a large in part of his coughing, his heart disease, that's why we're starting to see blood coming from the nose, and that's just a result of how infected these teeth are. All of them are gonna have to come out. All the teeth are not gonna have to come out. So we're still finishing up one side. We still have a whole nother side to do. Chances are he's gonna have an oral nasal fistula on the other side that I'm gonna have to create a flap for and close as well. You see that gaping hole. The same serious defect on the other side of his mouth Got to drill some of the bone back here. Means even more risky time under anesthesia for an elderly dog with a perilous heart condition. This is probably one of the worst fistulas that I've seen. Got the teeth that needs to come out so far out. Repaired the fistulas. Now we're going to get some dental x-rays, make sure everything else looks good beneath the gum surface. And if everything looks good, we're going to wake him up. But before they can begin x-rays... Not hearing that heart rate. There seems to be another problem with Toby's heart. So I want to get Toby up off this table, quick, fast, in a hurry. But it's the heart rate monitor, not Toby's heart, that has stopped working. Are you kidding me? Now the monitor goes out. And of course, <laughs> I've got to hear that beep, beep, beep because when that stops, no pun intended, but that kind of makes my heart stop. Thankfully, it's a simple fix. The electrodes connected to Toby's chest weren't moist enough to send electric signals to the monitor. That monitor, you always want to hear it in the background. That just kind of keep you sane. So I kind of lost my sanity for a minute there. Reassured Toby's heart is still beating, Arvid and Jenna take dental x-rays to see if there are any more teeth that need to be removed. Almost like the tip of the iceberg effect, just because a tooth looks healthy on the outside of the gum doesn't mean it's healthy underneath. That's the top neck. Mm -hmm. It's very last. After taking the x-ray, you can see that beneath the gum surface, there's bone loss and actually an abscess tooth there. That particular tooth will have to come out as well. You can hold this lip up for me real quick. We ended up extracting 14 teeth, which, yeah, I know it's a lot of teeth, but it was a necessity in order to cure his dental disease and everything that's going on with his pain and all of his other issues as a result of the dental disease. Toby's life-threatening surgery has finished not a moment too soon. That heart rate is starting to come down again. We're going to only get so many chances with that, so we're about to get him up. In Atlanta, 
it's almost time for Toby to go home after narrowly surviving high-risk dental surgery. Waiting anxiously to see her much-loved poodle, Andrea spent the day worrying the 15-year-old might not make it. It was definitely really stressful, again, given his age and his condition. I wasn't sure how he would handle the anesthesia. I was super relieved when Dr. Irvin called and told me that everything was okay. I felt like I could finally take a breath. So, yeah, it was definitely very relieved. Here he is. <laughs> Boy, baby. Oh. Here he is. Oh, oh my goodness. Yes. So you see, he's oh, got a little bit of blood uh, from yeah. his nose there. And uh, I'm gonna send you home with some gauze, okay. just to kind of blot it. Okay. But uh, because of the fistulas in his mouth, the bleeding is gonna be part of it. And the gums, you know, they're very vascular. Yeah. So, but he'll be fine. He will be just fine. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but he did great through his anesthesia. He, you know, handled it like a champ. My biggest hope for Toby is that one, we get this cough under control and alleviate it. Two, no more pain, pain-free life. We just focus on managing his heart condition and allowing Toby to give Andrea the love she is looking for for the rest of the time he's here. You be good and let mom do what she's supposed to do, okay? Okay. Long-term hopes for Toby is that that tracheal cough can really be minimized, that he'll have less oral pain, and that he'll be able to be a little bit more like himself again. All thank right. you so much. You're welcome. See you later, Toby. Say thank you. <laughs> Time to get you home. Get you some rest, okay? I know. All right, let's go. Come on. <laughs> Number four. I've had Folly 28 years now. She was my first horse, my dream horse. Yeah, I love her to bits. <laughs> You're such a good girl, aren't you? You're going to enjoy the dentist today. Her dental appointment, I believe, she doesn't mind too much. Good girl. She tends to be quite relaxed about it, and sometimes she actually looks like she's enjoying it. Come on, man. Hey, Philip. Hi, how are you doing? I called Scott today to, to give a hand with these horses. I thought it'd be something totally different for him and something he could get involved in. Is that there? Also, it's, it's just handy to have another strong person there to help hold the horses. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm nice Scott. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hi, you're Sue. I'm Sue. Hi. Hello. I'm Cher. Hi, Cher. And I've heard this gorgeous creature is Folly. It is Folly. Hello, beautiful. They say it's a bit rude to ask a lady her age, but just by the look of her, she looks like she is quite mature. Is that fair? She is mature, like her owner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's, um, Folly's about 38, 39 now. Are you? You look absolutely gorgeous. Folly is so beautiful. She's got the most gorgeous blue eyes and she's one of the oldest horses I've ever met. And being that she's a little bit, pardon the pun, long in the tooth, <laughs> uh, she's getting some dental work today. She is, yeah. She hasn't got any problems that I see at the moment, but um, I still make sure that everything's right in her mouth and she's comfortable. Yeah. Horse dentistry is really important in domestic animals because domestic horses live a very long time. Normal horses in the wild live to maybe 20 or so, so the older you get, like with us, the worse your teeth get. So, Philip, this is Folly, the ripe old age of 38. Wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Really good. Some horses just keep on going. Yeah. And she's looking pretty good for her age too. She is. All right, so, got to put this one on. Yeah, if you just extend it. In like order that. to be able to examine a horse's mouth properly, we need to place a gag, which is a large metal contraption. It allows the mouth to be open wide so it can assess the teeth, we can assess the gums and the tongue as well. So what do you look for first in the examination, Philip? We just check all the teeth, just like your own dentist would do with you. It just goes round, round the whole mouth. So you're feeling for sort of sharp edges, are you? Basically, yeah. It's important that we check anything in the mouth that might be causing the horse's discomfort and stop them eating properly and also old horses to be in danger of losing teeth, so we need to keep on top of what's happening in their mouths. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's got a... What's happened there? Ah, oh, she's got a broken tooth. And there it is. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. Yeah. That is huge. Whereabouts is that come out it's from? It's halfway along on, on her offside. 
Okay. Yeah. Halfway along. Yeah, on the bottom. My goodness. Mm. So it was a bit shocking seeing that drop out of her mouth. You can see that root there has gone rotten. It's just yeah. Gone away. It is quite confronting to see a tooth just come out of a horse's mouth like that. But for Folly, she's an old girl, and to lose a tooth at her age is quite normal. And the good thing about it coming out whilst we're here is that we're able to check for any underlying problems. I think yeah. that feels OK. It's not really impacting on any of the other teeth, and it's not infected. It's not seemingly causing her any discomfort. Yeah, that's, yeah, I'm happy with that. The next stage of Folly's treatment is a procedure called floating. Put a bit of downward pressure with this hand then on, on the, yeah. the handle. Using a coarse file, Scott will shave down any sharp edges on Folly's teeth. Yeah, you really have to give it a bit more force than you'd imagine. Good girl. Once again, it's just about not taking up too much, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. If you want to do the same then on the bottom... Folly, you're being a very good girl. She's very patient, isn't she? She's, she's, she's just so good. She's such a good girl. Oh, OK, baby. There you go. I mean, have a feel, Philip. I think yeah. that feels OK. I'm happy with that. I think it went very well. Yeah. Folly was happy with Scott. She seemed quite relaxed with him. Oh, yes, yeah, she did, yeah. She did, didn't she? Yeah. Oh, there, there you go. There you go, baby. Good OK, wonderful. Good girl. Good girl. Thank you, guys. She's going to feel much more comfortable now. Now we're done with Folly's dental procedure, she's got a perfect smile. And I think it's only fair, she's been a good girl at the dentist, she deserves a treat. There you go. Hey, don't tell mummy. Don't tell mummy. This week's number three. So, who have we got here? So this is Monty. Hi, Monty. He's about a five to seven year old koala that came in suffering from chlamydia. Oh, really? Um, and he was in very poor body condition. So we had to feed him up so that he would be able to survive the course of antibiotics. And thankfully, he survived and he's no longer positive for chlamydia. But in the last couple of weeks, he's suddenly lost a lot of weight. I see we've got some paste here. Does he kind of take his paste very well? Loves it. Oh, look, he's perked up no end. Look at this. Yes, look at the good stuff. Are you ready? And just sort of squirt it in? From just underneath, that's right. Just underneath, yeah. Oh, wow, good boy. What is this? So this is just a supplement to go with his natural diet. Yeah. Just for the extra calories and extra vitamins. That yeah, just provides. to build him up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Certainly the weight loss itself is a really big concern and we need to get to the underlying cause for this in the hope that we can turn him around. I'd like to think you're holding my hand in the spirit of friendship, but I think he just wants the food. <laughs> <laughs> It's great to see that his chlamydia is improving. Scott and Morgan have brought both Will and Monty to see a vet who specialises in koalas and often treats the sick or injured residents from the wires retreat. Sure, thank you. So we've got uh, two koalas for you. Dr Luke is a vet that works with koalas a lot and I'm a vet that lives in England, so clearly I don't work with koalas all the time, so it's really great to have an expert like Dr. Luke by my side. He's a very, very handsome chap, except for that very sore eye. In this area, we get koalas come in to care for a few different reasons. The main complaint is chlamydiosis, so a bacterial infection that affects their eyes, their urogenital tracts, and their ability to breed. Right, we'll have a look at that, see what we can do for him. Great. First, Scott and Luke are going to examine Monty to find out why he's gone off his food and lost a worrying amount of weight. It's very ingenious koala weigh station. I love it. 5.6 kilograms of koala. Next, Monty goes under a general anaesthetic so the vets can take a close look at his mouth. Like an expectant mum. <laughs> In order to examine Monty, we first need to give him an anaesthetic, so we gas him down. I kind of hold him like a baby, which is really quite nice. And once he's nicely anaesthetised, we can then get to grips with his physical exam. He's got quite a lot of wear mm. front two teeth there. So he's an old boy. Yeah, so that area of gingivitis there is abnormal. Mm. So I mean, there's definitely a hole there, a massive hole. Looking into Monty's mouth, there's quite a nasty area of infection. It's bleeding. There's a, basically a hole in his gum, and that's a cause of great concern. If we find an abscess, that would definitely explain his weight loss because he just wouldn't be eating as much, right? Yes, correct. 
if it is, the good thing is we can look at potentially taking the tooth out, which yeah. would make him much more comfortable. Yeah, and then eat more, put on yeah. some weight, go out to the wild. Yes, so we'll x-ray that and then we can have a better idea. But all of a sudden... The ageing koala starts to deteriorate. During the course of the anaesthetic and the examination of Monty, I noticed that suddenly he stopped breathing. I then reach and feel his pulse, and I can't feel it. We immediately jump into action, we turn the anaesthetic off, we give him a fresh blast of oxygen, and I start to rub his chest. And I just don't know if this very sick boy is going to make it. Pulse is strengthened now, so that's good. Thankfully, his pulse starts to strengthen, he starts to breathe better. Monty's okay. Oof, that's a little scare there. So, Morgan, how did it make you feel when your little man stopped breathing? Always uh, scary. It's nerve wracking when you know that they're crashing and that they're sick, and there's always that very real chance that we may leave him here, and, and that's the end of it. With everyone feeling relief. Got good blood pressure, Morgan. It's excellent. Scott can now take blood samples for testing. They should reveal if something more serious than dental problems is causing Monty's rapid weight loss. In this case, there could be far more sinister things like cancer, for example. Morgan is hoping he isn't forced to make a heartbreaking decision. Is this that we need to do? When we're looking at euthanizing an animal, it has to be an animal that we cannot treat or an animal that is going to be in, in chronic pain. These things, we ethically, we cannot release back into the wild and the kindest thing in those instances is to, to put the animal to sleep. An X-ray will reveal if a tooth abscess is the reason for Monty's poor condition. I can see just here there's just a little black spot there, so just this, almost like a little gap, but all the roots look pretty healthy. There is a plaque around the tooth to indicate that there's an abscess sitting behind there. The good news is that although there is some pockets of, of pus and infection there, the tooth and the bone around the teeth are all nice and healthy. So that means there is a real glimmer of hope that at some point in the very near future, this guy might be a wild koala once more. Just like mum. Koalas are in serious, serious trouble. But what we can do is try and make a difference in our little corner. And we do that one koala at a time. Number two. Hello, Cham. It's been a little while since I've seen you, isn't it? Oh, Stanley is like my best friend. I love him to bits. Um, I don't actually have him all the time. I share him with, with my ex-partner. Um, so um, when, when I don't have him, yeah, I miss him hugely. <laughs> so you completely look like me then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been Hannah's vet now for the last few years and been treating the gorgeous Stanley. And he's been a great little patient, although he has struggled with quite a severe illness uh, called syringomyelia. Syringomyelia is an extremely serious condition in which excess fluid is produced within the spinal cord near the brain. Symptoms include severe pain, with dogs feeling the uncontrollable urge to scratch at their neck and shoulders. So how have things been going with this syringomyelia? I think pretty good. Um, he hasn't been doing any sort of stargazing, which is, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And the neck pain? I think yeah. it seems to have definitely gone down, so mm. fingers crossed. Mm. So neck pain was what he presented with, and then also they do that odd sort of scratching at the neck. But he actually seems great now. I mean, there's absolutely no pain there whatsoever. Is there, champ? No. It's all very good. So let's just have a look at the rest of you, shall we? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, he's got pongy breath. Breath that only a mother would love. <laughs> let's put it that way. <laughs> I thought all dogs smell like that. 
Stanley is a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and they have the same amount of teeth as any other dog but crammed into a tiny little mouth which just means that some of them are at odd angles, they accumulate tartar a little bit faster and even with the owner's best efforts to keep the teeth clean, sadly they do lose more teeth than most other breeds. What we've got here, my friend, is a loose tooth. So actually the premolars, they're the ones between the canines, the sort of catching teeth and the molars, the grinding teeth, is actually quite loose. Will he have been in a lot of pain from that? In the past with his uh, neck pain, he's not been possibly the bravest puppy in the world. Exactly. So I think in this instance, if it was sore, he would tell us. Yeah. And you're not okay. telling us, you're just trying to lick us to death, yeah. aren't you, <laughs> hey? So Stanley's gonna be staying with me today and during that time we're gonna to have to knock him out under a general anaesthetic uh, and then we'll be assessing all the teeth but definitely removing those two loose ones. Oh. Wish mummy and I stay at work. Yeah, and I'll see you later. Mm. Say bye mummy. Say bye. bye. See you later. Bye. See you again. See you, Angie bye. Bye. Say bye mummy. Come on then Stanley. Let's go see Scott. Say hi. Hello champ. Mm, have you copped a whiff yet? Just a bit, just a bit stinky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Bless he's, him. he's not been using his Listerine, has he? No, oh, definitely not. Come here. Stanley was actually quite a brave boy today. His pain threshold normally isn't particularly high, but he let me put the catheter in. He was a very good boy. Nasty tartar and grossness on that tooth there. As soon as Scott begins the dental work on Stanley, it becomes obvious this is going to be a much bigger job than expected. I had a good look in the mouth and then started to chip away at all that nasty tartar which had accumulated on his teeth and actually found that his dental disease was quite a lot worse than I anticipated. So. Jess, we're at six teeth now, soon to be number seven, and that's only on just one side, so a bit of a surprise. The motto for teeth is, if in doubt, pull it out. So legs underneath, one, two, three, and over. Good boy. Good boy. Right. I had to take quite a few out. I'm gonna to have to count the ones I've left in rather than the ones I pulled out soon. <laughs> so they're just falling out. Yeah, some of these teeth are really pretty bad hardly having to pull them at all. As long as they're out of pain, that's the main thrust of what we're doing today. And he's gonna be much more comfortable with all these teeth out and his breath will smell a lot better as a result. So there we go, just all finished. Um, and all the teeth that remain are nice and white and healthy now, but uh, yeah, quite a few teeth <laughs> removed more than I thought. How many has he actually got left then? Well, he's got 19 left, but I removed 10. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait till your mummy hears about that, hey? Yeah. Let's let you wake up then, big guy, hey? Yeah. So today, of course, he's lost quite a few teeth, but what he's also lost is some pretty horrendous breath. And I think Hannah's gonna thank me for that, and certainly uh, her cuddles with him at night times might be a little more plentiful now that he doesn't stink so badly. Good boy, sleep it off. Wakey, wakey. Mummy's come to pick you up soon. Yeah. Later that day, Stanley is ready to go home. Good boy. Oh, straight away I can smell your breath smells better. Oh. The King Charles Cavalier Spaniel has recovered well from his drastic dental work. What? Oh, Stanley! <laughs> Hello. Here he is. Oh, he looks so well. So oh. the news, of course, is that he has lost quite a few more teeth than I anticipated. Okay. Um, it's gone from what I thought was maybe two or four to yeah. a full 10. Um, he's got 19 left, so fear not. He's got, I've left okay. more than I've taken away. Um, but what is very good and hopefully yeah. will uh, mean that he gets more snuggles with you is that his breath is a lot his better. His breath is so, so, oh my God, okay. it's really, really good. Yeah. He's still got enough apparently to chew and all the main ones are kind of still intact. So he just hasn't got a full on Hollywood smile. It's kind of like a gappy Hollywood smile. Oh, all right then. He did so well though. Well, thank you so yeah, much for Thank um, you so much um, for doing such a great job. And we will continue to monitor him Brilliant. as we have. Thank you very much. 
It was great to see that after a big day here at the practice, Stanley still had a wag in his tail for Hannah. Bye, bye, thank you. Yes, Stanley lost 10 teeth, but he's gained much nicer breath. And that's gonna mean he's gonna get many more cuddles with mum in bed, which is only a good thing. And this week's number one. Pepsi has developed a lot of tartar inside a mouth, on the teeth. There's concern they're sore, so my job today is to check them out. Give us a smile. Oh, good girl. Good girl. This is the bear they're talking about. Not so close. <laughs> she can reach through there. Pepsi was uh, rescued from a temple and looked after by monks, and as is often the case, has a terrible diet before she came here. The fact she had a poor diet meant that her teeth just never really have been in good shape. Since she's come in here, she's had a long history of dental problems. And today, we're determined to make sure there's no serious issues in there. Every now and then, I do just get a little glimpse of those, those discoloured teeth. Just the brown coating, the lower canine looks quite dark as mm -hmm. well. And we want to catch it before it turns into full abscess and then the bear can't eat. But there's obviously got to be a fair bit of care here because she can really turn. Yeah, no one goes that side of the bars. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> the only way we're going to be able to do this is by darting her and then under anaesthetic having a closer look. You a good shot? I'm OK. Good. I know I'm going to have to be better than OK right now, but yeah. <laughs> I'm OK. Oh. If you miss once, then they become really difficult. So first shot. One shot. One shot. Okay, it's having a look in, and yeah, she's full in. As I'm lining up the shot, Louise's words are echoing in my mind. One shot, it has to be one shot. So I take my time, and at just the moment where she turns around, I go. It looked like it had solid contact and stayed in there for a few seconds, so it should have Inject into the muscle. There we go. Yep. Okay. Good. Nice shot. So how do we know she's fully asleep here? Can we prod her or? Uh, we'll use the high-tech banana test. Banana test. Banana test. We're gonna just gently throw a banana at her from outside the cage. They teach you this at university in yep. Scotland or yep. was, was this a new thing here? Yeah, there's a, there's a full uh, course on the banana test. That is at her, and if she flinches, then she's obviously... Then she's not sleepy enough. Not sleepy enough. <laughs> it's quite ridiculous, <laughs> throwing bananas well, at, a, at a sleep test. bear. And then we try the broom test. It's a two-stage test. Yeah, sure. I already feel stupid enough throwing bananas at a bear that, that's asleep. I know, we made that up just for you. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. Pass. So she's out, right? She's out, good. So, we will give her a quick check with a stethoscope. We'll get our team to come down and we can load her onto the sidecar and take her straight to the hospital. Okay, there's a bit of a reflex there, but she's certainly looking deep enough to make this journey now. Whereas you know what to expect with a dog or a cat, the thing about a bear is they're not anaesthetised every day, so we don't really have the data, we don't really know the dosages and how long they stay under for, so we're flying pretty blind right now. All right, so do you want me to ride up with her? Yep. It looks like the anaesthetic is taking effect, but if she does wake up, she'd knock me down with her heavy hands and then slice and dice me with those massive claws of hers. Not ideal all round, really. The sidecar is the perfect form of animal transportation. It delivers Pepsi straight to the door of the vet clinic. Might have to get one of those for Bondi. You can see now that she's asleep, really thick layers of tartar over these canine teeth here and also some of these incisors. So the hope is, once we can scale that away, there should be a healthy tooth underneath. We hope.
Even though Pepsi is a slate, it doesn't mean we have all the time in the world. We've got to work to a really strict time schedule here because she cannot stay under anaesthetic for too long. It's the sound that sends shivers down everyone's spine. <laughs> Thankfully, Pepsi isn't awake to hear it. Do we need to do any extractions? Some of these front incisors aren't looking great. It's actually one that's a little bit loose there. The fact is, if we can avoid having to extract any teeth, then we will. But looking at this little incisor here, it's loose. And anyone that's had a loose tooth knows that it wobbles around and it's quite painful. So it is going to have to go. Of all the teeth to remove on a bear, though, this is the one you want to take out. It's the smallest tooth <laughs> out of the whole set. All right, that side's done. Let's spin up. Despite the challenges of her being a sun bear, having massive teeth, being potentially aggressive, having massive claws, it's all gone pretty much to plan. Now that she's all done, we're gonna get her back down to her enclosure, in the sidecar, of course, so she can wake up and be greeted by her best friend, Cola. That's right, Pepsi and Cola. I didn't make that up. Looks good. Yeah, we should get out. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> Two hours later, Pepsi has made a full recovery and has reunited with Cola. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.